Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's uh, tri board meeting. Uh, yeah, it's a little warm in here, so we're all kind of acting a little punchy. Um, better than outside. It is, but we're night. We're happy to be back inside the town hall. And if you look around the room, the floor looks great, and the walls are all painted. And it was a very good job. I think it came out very well. The walls were cleaned in here. Right. Well, we're outside. It's yeah, very outside. bright outside in the hallway. It is very bright. Looks huh. very nice. Nice job done by everybody. Okay, so we'll get started with our... And actually, everybody moved out of town hall and moved back in the town hall, and I understand there was no casualties. We didn't lose anybody awesome. other than the clock on the wall. <laughs> uh, I'll have to get my clock out. Then. Okay, so tonight we're starting at 6 o'clock for the tri board. And um, the first thing on our tri board agenda was to have a um, our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, presentations from the police and fire chief. Oh, town administrator as well. You okay. First, be happy to. So, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, we prepared strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threat analyses for each department. Uh, and uh, I'll be using the word SWAT, which is a, an abbreviation of Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. And I'm not going to go through line by line the um, 10 pages of uh, strengths and weaknesses and so forth, but I'll just uh, summarize them. So in terms of strengths, I think one of the first things that came to my mind was how uh, our finances are and that we have strong reserves, we have a strong credit rating, uh, we've been doing a lot of financial planning for years, and we have a financial management team that works very well together and tries to uh, make the budget work every year and manages that budget well during the year and spends a lot of time thinking about uh, the future of the town and how we can meet the challenges with our finances. Uh, structural uh, strengths, I think the town meeting form of government with the direct <laughs> Participatory democracy is appropriate for the town of Hadley. We have a well-balanced tax base. We're in an excellent location in the valley in the center of economic activity. Uh, we have uh, rightly looked at open space preservation and, um, and are a leader in open space preservation. Preserving agricultural lifeways, food securities, provide a carbon bank for the rest of the state. And it's beautiful to look at, and we promote uh, regional tourism by our pastoral uh, qualities. Personnel, we have unions, <coughs> and I like unions because it provides consistency and structure to our personnel management. Uh, I've worked in non-union towns before, and uh, we avoid a lot of the issues that uh, non-union towns get themselves into with respect to um, uh, fairness and, and uh, consistency in, in managing per, uh, people. We have uh, departments that work very well together and uh, proof of the pudding is the move that worked very well that we were able to accomplish that uh, on time. The contractor made the project go a little longer but we were able to do uh, the move and set up a satellite town hall over at the public safety complex provide a full range of services and then break that down and bring it back over here and set up again. We have a staff with a strong knowledge base, experience, professional <coughs> development, breadth of knowledge and training. Uh, and in terms of our functions, we have policy, numerous policies and guidelines to help us uh, keep uh, <coughs> our, fun our public services flowing. Weaknesses, financial, we have constricted finances. Uh, our revenues aren't what they used to be. Uh, and so we're beginning to feel the crunch and we're making hard decisions based upon uh, the, uh, scarce financial resources. Structural, we have a decentralized decision making uh, that we struggle with on a day-to-day on a -day basis. There's certainly checks and balances, which are part of a democratic uh, 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 society, but uh, we have too many people who don't, um, <clears throat> don't answer to a single authority or to concentration of authority, and so that means we sometimes get in our ways. 
Our zoning, I think, is restrictive, although it's in conformance with the uh, master plan. I think that uh, some of the projects that could be developed here in Hadley are not getting developed uh, because it's, uh, the zoning isn't appropriate, and we should take a look at that. Uh, in terms of uh, weaknesses for personnel, bench strength is our number one weakness. Uh, this is common for small towns everywhere that we simply don't have the personnel in place to cover all the functions and the depth within departments to cover functions should there be an absence uh, for any, whatever reason. We also have struggled with succession planning and we're seeing a loss of institutional knowledge. Some of our old timers have retired, which is fair play to them, but uh, they take with them a lot of institutional knowledge that we have to spend time and money to recoup. Uh, recoup. Um, perennial problem of the 21st century, I think this is endemic for everybody, is stress. Uh, coupled with uh, lack of sleep, uh, uh, the pace of, uh, of electronic communication, uh, and uh, poor diet, I think that this is part of the 21st century health problems. And then a lack of volunteers. We're primarily a, la a volunteer organization, and we see the same people signing up for the same open positions within volunteer committees. Uh, and it's hard to attract uh, younger folks to uh, uh, serve in town government. In terms of functions, we have difficulty coordinating and being compliant with, uh, with procurement. And I know that we live in a state with the uh, most <coughs> complicated procurement problems, uh, laws in the, in the nation, uh, and but still we manage to make uh, things difficult for ourselves, and sometimes we have to redo processes that we shouldn't have to. Uh, we are a small town, 5,000 people, except that we have 20,000 people in it right now, and so we're a small town. We have small town resources, and we... Uh, have to uh, address large town needs. And then for opportunities, uh, we have grants. We have been very aggressive about going after grants. We have a new source of revenue with casino gaming coming online. Structural, we have a, uh, the local economy works very well for us. We have strong local employers. UMass employs 6,000 people total. Our top 10 Hadley employers uh, employ uh, over a hundred each, so we have uh, good good employment opportunities, and our unemployment rate is lower than the Commonwealth's and lower than the nation. <coughs> opportunities for personnel: we have a highly educated and skilled workforce from which to, to recruit. Uh, in terms of functions, our opportunities for energy conservation, net metering credits uh, are there. There's more that we can be doing. Uh, something not to be overlooked is our community and civic pride. I see it every day working in the town of Hadley. People really are proud about their community and are very concerned about its future. Uh, and that's, that's an opportunity to tap into that civic pride. Local and regional partnerships. All t small towns work very well by partnering with local and regional uh, uh, entities, but we do it very well. Our legislative delegation for Western Massachusetts in general is very strong and influential, and we're very fortunate to have them. Uh, our professional organizations we're active in, and we receive many benefits from. Uh, we have a good working relationship with many Commonwealth agencies, such as Department of Revenue and the Executive Office. Uh, and several departments are using social media. We could be doing more about that, but uh, the Police Department, Fire Department, and others have been very effective in getting social media to work for them. Our threats, um, state assessments, uh, very uncontrollable, very unpredictable. We can see a 25% swing from year to year in the assessments that the state uh, levies against the town of Hadley. We have unfunded and we have expensive mandates, unfunded mandates and expensive mandates such as storm, stormwater regulations. Uh, education sees it in spades, um, election uh, mandates which are unfunded, and our state reimbursements are either late or they're underfunded. Uh, and then we have unfunded liabilities such as uh, pension and OPEP. 
threats uh, having to do with personnel, that we have, see an aging of the professionals in water, in accountants, and in town administrators. Uh, we're seeing uh, the profession age, and we're not seeing young people coming up through the ranks, and so that's going to be a pressure later on. And then a threat to the town of Hadley in terms of our functions, that we have, we're approaching build out and along Route 9, and we're beginning to see more and more congestion on Route 9. Both of those are a drain on our resources and a limitation to available resources. Natural gas moratorium is a big threat, and then natural disasters and <coughs> the ever-present litigation. So that's a summary of my SWOT analysis. Any questions, comments? Yes, please. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Can you explain the decentralization decision making and why that's a what 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 the problem is? And I, I didn't really get I couldn't understand what that really meant. Okay, so you have a number of elected uh, officials uh, who have staff. Uh, you have a number of appointed committees that uh, that make decisions. Uh, we have uh, buildings that are managed by different entities. Uh, and if they're not on the same page, that can cause uh, confusion, delay. Uh, and uh, so I don't want to name any names, but just a moment's reflection will, will probably suggest something to you. All right, so we have monthly meetings. You have monthly meetings with your staff. Mm -hmm. and, and these things get brought up and addressed, and, and are they not getting fixed? I think we're approaching getting fixed. Um, we have, uh, we've seen some progress, particularly in, the, in terms of getting our procurement problems under control. Okay. Uh, but I think we still have a ways to go. Uh, and this is, you know, this may be a structural problem rather than a relationship problem. Uh, we may want to think about in the future, uh, do we have too much decentralization? As, do we have too many checks and balances? Should we uh, think about a, a, a different form? All right, and if it's if it's site specific with with individuals, let's let's get on board with that and get those things fixed. If it works in nine out of ten things or seven out of ten things, let's get everything else. Let's get it in writing. Let's get it to the people and let's get it everybody on board because that's a that's an ongoing thing and it's bad amongst the staff for the rest of everybody else. Well, why should I do it if they don't have to do it? So I mean, if we can help with that, I mean, we we got to get that addressed. That's a serious issue. I think that needs to be addressed. The lack of volunteers, I couldn't agree with you more. I think the town of Hadley, it's not its not the town of Hadley. It's a, it's a nationwide phenomenon now that the people that, you know, are just too busy, I guess. I don't know. Um, and we need to see about that. I know in the fire department is, is an active, uh, Massachusetts is very active now, whether it's uh, in advertisements on TV or advertisements on billboards across the Commonwealth. I see there that people are looking for volunteers, you know, to get involved with it. But this is a... A municipal problem that's across the board. I mean, I think that we ought to, you know, try to engage Mass Municipal Association and try to get them involved because I don't know a town that's not having that problem. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, at any of the seminars do you go to, is, is that ever, uh, you know, take a point to address? They, they talk about it a lot, and there's a lot of effort uh, put uh, placed on either changing a form of government, getting away from volunteerism, uh, or uh, trying to promote uh, uh, volunteerism among their community through various programs. So there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of, t some of my uh, colleagues uh, uh, help teach classes in the local high school or are part of a curriculum within the, the high school in order to promote interest in civic government. Mass Moderators Association has a, a, a thing set up when I belong to that, and they would actually, you know, ask the people in the moderators to go into the communities and take and teach, you know, take it in some type of civics class or something like that, and, and try to, you know, get all the kids together, okay, if you guys could vote on something, let's pick, let's pick a topic. And they picked a topic and they went and brought it to a town meeting, and sometimes they actually brought it to the real town meetings to get it done. Well, I digress. I mean, that's certainly not not an end all to anything, but I mean, I think we need to, to get involved with a Mass Municipal Association. I, I prioritize that. I'm sure you have in Franklin County and see it everywhere across the boards. 
I see the unemployment rate here that you list is at 4.5 percent. What is that? What's the national average? Five three. Uh, as of November of last year, uh, I think it was somewhere around five seven, or maybe it's uh, a little closer to six. Well, I think that's a really good number because I think five percent of people in the United States are unemployable. Uh, those were my only comments. Yeah. <laughs> Just we were waiting for follow-up. No, no, that, 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 that was... We were waiting for yeah. you to say, and I'm running for president. Are you running? Are you all done, Jerry? Or? That's it. That's it. Kanye. Uh, I just, uh, question. So, you know, one of the uh, challenges that we have, obviously, as a select board, is taking all this information and, and pulling it together, and you probably have the most kind of holistic view and your SWOT analysis. Um, so if, you know, given, given where uh, kind of this um, juncture right now, could you throw out maybe what you see as the three top priorities? Um, I'm not going to hold you to it, but I mean, just fix this off the top of your head, obviously, I didn't ask you ahead of time. But, you know, what really jumps out at you are as areas that we need to start working on immediately. Bench strength. Mm -hmm. All right, so particularly having to do with human resources, um, bench strength in terms of uh, some of the other departments that have one or two people in it if they, if they leave the, the group closed down. Um, so that's one of the, the, the main things. The, um, lack of volunteers that uh, Jerry talked about. Uh, I think that the recognizing that the being a small town, and there's so many th good things about being a small town, but recognizing that we have three shopping s areas, we have two major commuting corridors, we have a quarter of the UMass campus, um, we have th tens of thousands of people in uh, Hadley, except between 1 a.m. And, and 5 a.m., uh, that we're going to be in a place where we can't provide enough services. And so we have to start thinking about, can we retain the best of being a small town, but make that next step to increasing the kinds of public services that this town really needs in order to uh, address all the the, the demand that's out there in terms of traffic, in terms of congestion, in terms of, uh, of activity, uh, in terms of uh, safety, public works, uh, you know, the, whole, the whole shebang. So defining, <coughs> defining a new or the ideal service model and then figuring out how to bridge the gap from where we are now. Right. To, okay. Oh, come on, you got another? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, some of the unfunded liabilities we have a strategy for, um, but I think we need to we need to continue to double down on that strategy. Linda and I are working on on parts of that, uh, but I think that recognizing that they're dreaming up different ways of, of looking at unfunded liabilities. We have to have a long-term financial plan for all of it, so we're going to be seeing additional um, demands upon our financial resources to address different ways that people can look at the town's finances and think about, okay, in the future, where are you going to be lacking? So. Mm -hmm. Can I just, um, just I one thing following up on uh, Jerry's remarks or questions? Going back to the school, Linda, I know at, at one point, I know there's been conversation kind of on and off over the years about, obviously with funding, like civics programs that existed when we were kids are long a thing of the past. Um, and, you know, having an actual course in a small school added to the curriculum is probably not something that's going to happen easily or, or there would be funding for. But, um, Leveraging off of what David was saying, some other towns do, and I don't know if there's anybody in Franklin County that does it, but even having some sort of a more formal program that could be on a volunteer basis where kids can get some sort of credit or whatever just to promote 
them coming through and understanding how the sewer plant works and the water department and stuff. But I mean, I think is that so yeah, that seed has up. to get planted I brought like, it really up last early meeting. In, in order for it to go ahead and talk about yeah. it. You know, through the science program or through the math program or something, get everything's through Sacramento books, we call them, through the water and wastewater. And and if you could uh, adapt to that curriculum through the high schools and bring some of these kids up that may be interested in staying in town and, and doing like I did 30 years ago and continue on. We you know? had a, um, we had Mr. Goodhue that used to do the civil you know, government, local government, and I know when my kids went through it, he would have kids come over and they would write grants, mm -hmm. or they, not necessarily grants, but they would do a um, warrant article. Right, we, we worked we with worked Mr. Goodhue and we, we got two classes to present uh, mm -hmm. warrant articles. One was actually passed and the other one was shot down, mm -hmm. I think. We have to think but it was about a good the, process the pain. for them to go but, through. Yeah, yeah, I mean, these are these are uh, things that other cities and towns are doing right now. I don't know on a county level if you're looking at anything like that with water and wastewater and municipalities in general, general government. But is this something you could bring back to sure. the school committee or any any happening in meeting tomorrow night? Well, there you go. Because and whatever resources we need to do on our end to help figure out how to make a program of some kind work, I know Mr. Burns will be interested. Or... Is that who took Fred's book? No. no, he's the no. head of the history. No. Though he's head of his history. Yeah. yeah. Any other comments on the town ministers? No. Good uh, report. Thank you. I pretty much just covered the grant writing. I had a few questions, but Molly kind of covered everything right there quickly. I'm sorry. All right, so I'm going to do one question. We all, every time we, every time someone does a sort of strength weaknesses and all these other things, it's, everyone glosses over the strengths when they talk about what do we need to do better. So is there a strength that you list that we need to put some effort into to maintain it? Otherwise, it may slip into being a weakness or. I think strengthening our financial planning and uh, strengthening the, the role of the financial management team uh, are two things that, we're, that are on our radar and we should uh, continue to promote. Uh, so when I say that, uh, I mean we should be continuing to look at our policies for financial management and adding to those year after year, making sure that we're compliant with those uh, policies wherever practical uh, and I, I'm not sure that formalizing a financial management team uh, is in our interest but certainly having people who think of themselves as being part of a financial management team so when I say financial management team I have particular people in mind and particular positions in mind that I can go to uh, in order to address whatever problem or process that we're going through uh, we may want to make that a little bit more formal and uh, and, and explicit. Okay. Any other comments, questions? All right. The next one in my book is the police chief. So we'll go with you next. Okay. Um. <laughs> Shucks and lady. So, uh, first off, my, my presentation is not going to be as long as David's, uh, so I hope that's... And you're the winner already. <laughs> um, one, of the, one of the things that I found when I, when I actually sat down to do this is that as you, as you create the SWAT, uh, when, when you plan on having to make a presentation, every, all of the items that I listed, I, I felt, when I was writing them down, all felt different. So presenting it as a summary seemed very difficult to me, but I think perhaps it was part of the actual plan. Um, when you really kind of step back, with a few exceptions, it is fairly easy to uh, bring most of these categories in line with one another and find a common theme. So that's kind of how I approached the presentation portion of it. There's obviously probably a lot more listed on, on what you folks have on paper. 
than what I can present. But what I, what I, that's how I approached it. Was I, I found, I tried to find a common thread in each category, and just a simple way of, of relaying that information. So as far as the strengths go, a lot of that focus for me was on the involvement and, and commitment level of our personnel. Um, that to me, I, I can remember. Um, Guilford asking a question during my in, my final interview about strengths uh, of, of the agency, and that was top on my list. It was just personnel. We have a group of people who have the commitment and want the department to move forward. Um, so that was really one of my big things, and that's that's kind of how I focused all of my strengths. Um, the structure of our agency, while not fully complete. Um, in putting those things and putting those things in place, I see that as a strength because the the people know where we're headed. They need to know that we have a direction, and if they see that um, we're putting things in place to move it in that direction, um, it boosts morale. People want to work harder. You know, you have less sick time. You know, less of the problems that you would normally have, and and it's it's it is a, it is an absolute strength when you can do things like that. Um, and the last one is. Being a new chief and um, not not knowing a whole lot about how to run an agency, um, having access to regular access to a town administrator, a select board, finance committee, uh, people to bounce things off of is probably one of the the greatest strengths that, that I can I can see as far as our agency goes. It's not necessarily a matter of me being new, but I think. Any department head should focus on that as a strength because it's necessary. Um, opportunities. I may have taken a, a more positive and hopeful approach to this than some of the other department heads, uh, possibly because of naive, naivety. Um, but uh, I focus more on, on the future, uh, the opportunities, the possibilities. Uh, that lay ahead for the department. Possibility of additional personnel um, working with uh, with David um, and and Mike um, on capital uh, requests, grant opportunities, anything that we don't have to request in a budget. Uh, in my mind, is a positive opportunity if we can go out and find a grant to do certain things. Um, that's one of the things that I that I want to focus on, and. Along those same lines, um, Bill actually alluded to it uh, last meeting that we had. Some of those things uh, are cost savers. Um, and I think that's probably a little bit about what the Finance Committee maybe wanted to see from these SWOT analyses was um, what kind of opportunities are out there for us to save money. Uh, and we actually had, a, Mike and I had a, a you know, lengthy meeting with the superintendent today and we had a department meeting right after that where uh, Annie was talking about how sometimes spending dollars in a budget to save more dollars in the future even though your you know your general number is going to go up is better than just sitting on your hands and waiting for you know the the, the end result uh, but that's a big thing for me as far as opportunities go is looking for the possibility of saving money in certain areas so that we can, you know, make more positive impact with our dollars. Uh, weaknesses, uh, the similarity in this category, if you look on my list, almost all have to do with funding. Uh, funding, resources, uh, lack of personnel, uh, put people in certain places to get the job done. Uh, almost every one of those, the issues in that category is, is driven by um, Factors like historical failures in, in leadership and, and how we do things over the years. Um, some of it has to do with poor communication. I know we've talked about that a lot in not only department head meetings, but select board meetings, finance committee meetings. Um, and it causes 
town-wide and it's been worse in the past. Right. We're it's making a little progress on the pension. And we are. I have to say something about <laughs> yeah. that because we go through it every day. Right. We talk about it constantly and, and maybe, maybe ignorance is not the word to use, but when you have poor communication and you expect those above you who have the power to do something about your problem and they don't know about it, that's a major, major issue. It's a major flaw. Yep. Yeah, we have to continue to work to correct things like that. Um, and we're, we're moving, uh, you know, into new territories. And um, one of the other weaknesses that I listed is, is uh, you know, historical lack of, of structure and, and discipline uh, at the police department. I, I don't say that to make it sound like it's a, you know, a preschool running wild because that's not the situation. But we all know that, you know, in, in this profession, we're held to a higher standard and um, the public eye is always upon us. So changing that culture um, because of the way that it's been for so long, is, it's, I, I hate to, to say it, but a lot of times it gets worse before it gets better because people get used to uh, the way things work. So um, that's, that's one of the reasons why I put that in, in that area. Um, threats, again, stepping back and, and looking at the list, unfortunately, um, almost all funding related issues um, that I came up with, I'm certainly not saying that my list is the, the only list, um, but level funding, level service budgets, um, that's a threat to public safety. Um, that's just how Mike and I have always, since since uh, I started this job, we've talked about it. It's 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 worrisome. Unfunded mandates, as David said, um, and I, I kind of split that into two categories. You have you know unfunded mandates as well as uh, increase in, in training requirements. I we have an increase in our training requirements almost annually. There's always something new coming out that we are going to be required to train. We're going to be required to do. We're going to be required to know. To me, that is an unfunded mandate. That is something that, whether it be forced out, forced upon us because of uh, public perception, um, with all the stuff that's in the news nowadays. Um, one of the one of the things that I'm working my way through right now is uh, President Obama's report on 21st century policing. It's a it's a read, and it's going to change a lot about law enforcement um, if things like that are, are enacted. The Mass Chiefs and the International uh, Chiefs of Police Association are actually responding to uh, that paper because of the built-in unfunded mandates, more of a training issue, that we're going to be required to train our officers in. And we're going to be required to go to our towns and say, I need more money to train the people, towns and cities, and to train these people to handle these things. And that rolls right into the next threat, um, David also said, which is litigation. You have to train these people in these things, otherwise you're going to get sued. Um, so it's, uh, it's kind of a <coughs> domino effect. But that's what I put together. All right. Jerry went first. Uh, yeah. um, I really don't have any questions. I know that you know we're all kind of working on our uh, um, strengths and weaknesses. And uh, for Mike's first throw at this, it it's good. You know, I think he did a good job, and you know, I think it's something that we all have to work on. You know, it's not just your department; it's town wide. John. Uh, I read through your regional dispatch. Is it something you're going to put on on your agenda in the next well, year or so? And yeah, I, I uh, just I, just as you wrote, I, I am yeah. interested to see the actual cost savings you or that not. I put it in two different categories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, it needs to be addressed. Yeah, for sure. Um, what what just to bring up to speed what we have on that? What I've done on that so far is. Um, uh, I should say we, uh, David and Mike and I actually met with um, the lady who is, uh, I 
don't know exactly what her title is or position, but she's she's the one that's in charge of the grant that Amherst, uh, the town of Amherst, put, uh, put wrote to investigate regionalization of dispatch. So what she requires in order to put all of her facts together is a ton of information from any town that is interested in this. And when I say a ton, I'm not even sure that I, I'm doing it justice. We basically did the best we could with the with the spreadsheet that she emailed us, filled out everything we possibly could. We've sent her um, our contracts for the dispatchers. She's looking, she was looking for wages and all kinds of things. Um, and she's in the process of uh, compiling that data. So we're kind of waiting right now. Um, I sp I've spoken with the Amherst Police Chief uh, about it. And um, they're kind of in a standby mode as well to, to see what's what's going to happen with that. That's why I put it in two categories, because it could be an opportunity, could be a threat. Yeah. We don't know. I mean, a lot of it is going to have to do with cost savings. And the only, the only other thing I had was uh, for cost, for in your cost savings, your part-time personnel. Uh, where are we at with that in specials? And we that's are, still involved with the contract right now, or the the project that I had requested of the union is has just ended. Um, I'm starting to compile the numbers now. I'm hoping to get on the one of the next two agendas, hopefully. To, talk to you folks about it and run down what happened. Um, we are currently beginning a hiring process to get more specials and part-time dispatchers uh, on the force. Uh, right now in the hopes that you know, we can kind of fill some of the gaps that we have. But you know, like I said, I'm putting the numbers together now so we'll see how it works. And, uh, have you been utilizing the mutual aid agreement statewide, or utilizing it in what way? I mean, As well, we're signed on. Yep, we are signed on. We're we're a part of it, and when we need another town, we call. If they need us, they call. They're just getting back. <coughs> yeah, summertime. Molly, a um, couple of questions. Um, first one, in terms of, uh, I guess, it's opportunities. In staffing, um, I think you know, you've been very clear in terms of the hierarchical issues within the department, and know what your suggestions have been in the past for um, rectifying that. But uh, do you see any opportunity at all to um, work with other area agencies to fill some skill set gaps that may exist right now? Specifically, we've talked about um, the concept of having uh, a detective function. Is that anything that's viable, or does well, that just not work? Well, I can tell you what what um, what we're doing right now is we are um, going to be signing on with the state police um, out of the district attorney's office mm -hmm. uh, to have one of our officers uh, become a member of their task force, which mm -hmm. is mainly an investigative task force. I think they call it the I think they call it a drug task force. I'm not sure what the actual name of it is. Um, so we uh, are going to be selecting an officer to be put on the task force. There is going to be a little bit of cost there, but what we will get on the flip side of that, the benefit is their entire team, if we have an issue that we need investigated, we have those resources to use. Um, for example, Several months ago, we were having all the car breaks, mm -hmm. um, West Street and all those areas. In speaking with the lieutenant who, who were trying to work this deal out, as well as the DA's office, his, the, the picture he drew for me was, I got 10 guys that I can send this way, and they're going to investigate that for you and help you do surveillance and any of those other things you need for as long as you need them to do it. That's how the plan works. So. Things like that, we are absolutely looking into. Um, we're, I shouldn't even say looking into that one. We're doing. Mm -hmm. um, it is reimbursable. I'm working out the details with the DA's office right now, but it's it's things like that that we're we're going to be trying right now. And then, second question, um, basically the same one I asked uh, the town administrator. You know, just if two areas of focus that you would like to see the select board move on, start pushing forward to. Well, 
I mean, move on, start pushing forward, I think maybe aren't the best terms. I would say maybe maybe work with with us, with me, with me and Mike. Finances um, drives everything as far as public safety goes. We, you know, we have kind of a tough task here where we are trying to cut overtime um, because it, we all know it's a problem. But at the same time, not reduce our services. I'm actually trying to do the opposite. You know, it's a, it's tough to, to do things like that without <coughs> cooperation. So I would say finances would be number one, and um, probably um, I'd like to kind of work on a better structure as far as the department goes. We talk a lot about accreditation and things like that. Mm -hmm. There's a tremendous cost involved in, in things like that, but there's no reason that we can't, um, you know, make that a goal or, or make it something to work towards. Work towards? Things like that, I think David kind of talked about it in his SWAT as it relates to retention. Um, if you, you know, if you, if you have a good base, a good boilerplate to work off of, and, and, and everyone in your agency knows what the end goal is, it, it, it helps to retain employees. You're not going to have that kind of turnover, and when you do have turnover, those are the things that are going to cost you money, especially in our department with the minimum staffing problems. We lose an employee. I got to figure out a way to fill that spot as quickly as possible with a quality replacement. The last thing we want to do is replace this person just for the sake of replacing them, so we don't have to pay out overtime. So it's a it's a balancing act. So I would say that um, somehow working together to, to build a stronger structure for the department moving forward would be on my list. Okay. And I think when you lose somebody, it's not just a matter of replacing them with the best possible person, but it's still a matter of time and money and orientation. Yeah. No matter how much knowledge or skill that person comes with, they still have to learn your department. Absolutely. And, and, so, and, and that's you know, cost. You're going to be spending money to train these people, and you, you don't even know if they're going to make it through the training process. Mm -hmm. So you're spending money for that. You're still backfilling that open spot. And the way, unfortunately, we work, it's over time. And you don't know if this person's going to make it through the field training program. So it's another domino effect, unfortunately. Jerry? Yeah, I just got two things. Mike, Chief, great job having a police department in for the first day of school this morning. Those are great things, and I think everybody that dropped their kids off really appreciates it. And I think you can learn a lot from Michael sitting right next to you because Michael does so much for the community with the people that he has, whether they're raising money for flags or having washing cars, and that builds the community support for you, just like Michael's done with what he's trying to do there. And I think if, if, if we can get involved with some of the projects from the police department as well as like what Mike does, that's going to help build a lot of groundswell and support that you're going to see. Uh, I don't know how you can stay your threats without talking about the crap that's happening in the world right now to the police department. Uh, it, it's a threat every day you guys go to work and I just see the stuff that's going on and it's hellacious to me. So anything we can do to build rapport amongst the community, if it's how the guy walks up to the cruiser when he says, you know, license and registration, so it's not a threatening thing, it's a, geez, I have a job to do out here, you were doing 60 and a 40, and you know, we got kids running around here and we just have a job to do and you'd really help us a lot if you slow down. It's the way people talk and, and are treated from the police department that I think builds support. So anything you can do to do that, and I'm not saying the guys do a bad job or the, the, the team does a bad job under any circumstances, but anything that you guys can do to help build support from the ground level is gonna go a long way towards the citizens of Tom Hadley. I agree, thank you. Does that include, I'm just giving you a warning this time? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> you need a warning? Like the point you were trying to make. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is the tribe board meeting. I forgot. Does the finance and the school committee have any questions? How or no? No, I mean, it was uh, very well done. Very professional. Really went into the department operation, and uh, I like what you had there. So um, now that you asked, um, you know, I did uh, a lot of things that uh, David brought up. Um, a lot of them also seem to fall into the blank of the management. I think a lot of those issues, 
good management could be resolved very easily. And uh, same thing with, I take a little exception with the union remark you made. I think there's a lot of good operations that don't have unions. Unions definitely have a place, um, but they can't be a substitute for good management. No, but I love that you're taking part in the DA detective program. It makes me happy. Good. Okay, I think everything I was going to ask has been asked, so I will let the fire chief start. I got them both beat. <laughs> uh, thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, thank you to the schools and finance committee for being here as well. Uh, you have a copy of my, uh, my SWOT analysis, and uh, we'll start out with the strengths. I'll get right into it. Uh, thank you, Jerry, for your comments on that. And that's one of our strengths is a good public perception, I believe, and good customer service. And I think that's as a result of our improvements on our inspections, our working with the building inspector, electrical inspector, plumbing inspector, where we're educating the community on fire and life safety rather than just handing tickets out and shutting doors uh, for violations. That education, I think, goes a long way. We've built quite a rapport with the communities, uh, you know, business and residents. Uh, our addition of the full-time fire lieutenant to take over my position was critical. Uh, we'll get into the, the weaknesses next. <laughs> but uh, I think there's, that has definitely helped with increased inspections because we have so many businesses here. And with the daily operations of our department, uh, it's, it's very difficult to keep up with it all. Uh, our firefighters, the town has been very supportive over the past few years with getting us new equipment and turnout gear, which is critical for the safety of the folks that are stepping up and, and going to these fires and incidents. So I believe that's a very good strength. And while we still have a number of pieces of apparatus that are uh, extremely old and outdated, we're heading in a positive direction, especially with the new pumper that we have coming in where we're designing it in a way that it will take the place of two vehicles rather than just one. And it will be built in a way that it's gonna last, hopefully, knock on wood, for the next 30 years. So those are some of our uh, strengths. Another one, a very important one, and Mike mentioned it as well, is our, our coordinated efforts between police and fire now. We've become a public safety complex, and when talking about budgets, we were discussing it today, that we're making every effort to communicate between each other to try and make cost savings. So reviewing contracts that we have that we used to enter into individually and seeing if by combining them makes them better. So working together on the services that we have. And I think that's a, a very good strength that we have right now. Obviously mutual aid is always positive. Unfortunately, the communities around us are having the same staffing and and retention of call force members, and then just the number of calls that are coming out are straining just their full time. So mutual aid, while it is outstanding, is 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 difficult, and it's a it's a burden on communities around us, even though they will always answer the call. Some of our weak with weaknesses. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna start off with the budget process. With the effort that we put in on trying to work on combining uh, items and things like that, I, I just I hope and I know it's been brought up that we'd like to be able to sit down and be able to review our budgets a little bit more clearly to make sure that you understand fully what we're requesting because we're giving you real life numbers and it seems like sometimes that is that's overlooked. So we're then trying to pull from other line items or we're holding off on getting needed equipment or needing needed products uh, for the public, you know, for public use and that's a concern of mine. I think that's a weakness. Our daytime availability, so our, our staffing right now is two full-time folks. NFPA, if you look at an NFPA standard for response to any kind of an incident, it's a minimum of four on a truck. So we're nowhere near to that, and I can tell you that our daytime availability of call force members is critically low. So 
we used to have folks that worked in town, we used to have folks that worked on the DPW that were available. Their jobs have become more difficult, where it's more difficult for them to get pulled off of them to respond to an incident. And the same with the folks that are working, and no longer working in town, they're going outside of town. Or if they are working in town, you know, the folks that are employing them, they can't afford to have them leaving their job. On top of that, folks have busy family lives, and it can be a burden with the amount of trading that we have. So the increased training is also, is also a weakness. Uh, completion of ongoing project, projects is another concern of mine, and it's act, you'll actually hear more about it tonight in my goals and objectives. Uh, because we're so busy constantly, the projects tend to build up. So that right now is a weakness, but I'm hoping that the next time we do a SWOT analysis, it will be under our strength. <clears throat> so again, uh, one final thing under weaknesses is that Mike and I have talked about this as well, is that while we have a, a beautiful public safety structure, it's our opinion that we've already outgrown it. So we're busting at the seams with it. So that we believe is another weakness that we have. And I did, add, and I did. That was actually added. That's not on your your thing, but I think it's important that you know. So opportunities. Obviously, continuing with our mutual aid partners. One another one working with uh, with select board and finance. I'm hoping that by you know improving communications, we'll be able to give you better information and work together to give you more accurate information, so that in turn. It will improve on our budgets and, and, and what we're doing for you. Um, professional development is difficult to do when you're so busy in the office that you can't go to it. And like Mike was saying, all the required trainings now, uh, certifications for inspections across the board. It's the same in every department. It makes it difficult when you're trying to go to a two or three day you know, training and you come back and the stack is, is 10 times higher because you don't have the staff to maintain it. Uh, opportunities, uh, grants. There are grants out there, even though they are more difficult to get. I believe that uh, looking into a full-time department through with, you know, with a very, very, uh, in-depth analysis of it, cost-benefit analysis, so that we have all the facts and figures for the for the townspeople, and then in coordination with federal grant money and state grant money, putting forward uh, a proposal to the community to see if they'd be willing to support a full-time department uh, as a fire base with a fire-based ambulance service attached to it to support that that staffing as well. I believe that's a very big uh, opportunity for us. The use of social media and outreach has been an improvement and it's a great opportunity for us. Uh, we have a gentleman in front of us who had an opportunity to go and do some training with us. I think it's important that the community knows what we're going through as far as training. And I thank him for coming out and being a part of that and putting together a really nice piece on that. Uh, we've also seen an increased uh, inspection revenue <laughs> <laughs> because we are working hard on making sure that we are, are improving on our ins inspections where you should hopefully be seeing an increase in inspection revenues. The threats again everybody has said the unfunded federal state and uh, federal and state mandates are pounding us with all the training and requirements uh, with grant opportunities is also more difficult and the number the amount of it is much less litigation and increased training requirements for firefighters call force members have limited time again so to ask them to not only respond to calls at all hours of the day and night but then also to come multiple times a week to try and keep up on their training is is definitely a threat for us uh, Challenges in finding new call force members is another one. It's, I know they're advertising everywhere and that's the reason because of that challenge of finding it. Uh, we are constantly recruiting new call force members. You know, we're working with uh, the schools to see if anybody's interested in coming up. Um, constantly we're looking for folks. The problem is, is the expense, like Mike said, of putting them through the training to find out that they, they can't go through, they can't put a mask on and go into a building 
because it makes them go crazy. Uh, there's an expense to that. And the other thing is that we don't really have, we're set up so we're a call force department. So a lot of these young folks, they'll come in, they'll provide, you know, they'll do the training, they'll provide some service, but then they're either off to college or they're moving out of the area. So we invest in that training for one, maybe two years of service. So it's difficult to keep trying to find folks to fill those spaces. Um, just increasing calls. Our call volume has increased, and we'll be discussing that in my goals and objectives as well later. So we're trying to figure uh, if we need to be going to all these calls and what the impacts would be if we don't. So that's, that's a basic review of it. Uh, I wish I had a better presentation for you. I, again, it kind of reflects on my ability to find the time to do it all. And the communications of being able to have a little bit more time to put it together. So uh, I thank you for listening and if you have any questions. So we'll start with the audience today on this one. Would you like to? No, I don't, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good article. We thank you for doing yes, that. that was going, so. If you wish to do any other articles, like maybe you want to go with the police or the DPW, I mean, it's going to snow soon. Uh, let us know. We'll be no, it's not. <laughs> so anytime. I mean, that was very well, good. We can give you a sewer department tour if you'd like. Yeah. Great. <laughs> any, any department, you know, if we have time, we'll, we'll definitely, we'll definitely do that. It was a great, it was a great, and let people know what was going on. We appreciate that. So, finance, school. Great. Okay. Um, John, you go. Uh, professional development, and how many times have I told you already, Mike, you got to make time for yourself, for your training. Not only for your staff, but for yourselves. I, I've told both of you that, because I've been in the same boat for the last 30 years here. And I've had arguments with my boss saying, no, I have to go. We need these credits and we need the training. We have to keep up with the rules and regulations from the state and federal mandates. And everybody needs to realize this, you know. Uh, implementing of the ambulance service, similar to what he's doing with the county dispatch. We need accurate numbers, not these numbers, that numbers, 10 years ago those numbers. We, we need actual numbers of calls and, and times and whether it's worth regionalizing or hiring or whatever with the ambulance service, just like the dispatch, I think. You know, everybody has one ambulance, but if your response time's down, that ambulance is doing nothing for our community and our taxpayers. Molly. Um, I'm going to, pretty predictable right now, I'm going to ask the same thing in terms of, um, and I guess I have another question too, but you know, common threads uh, throughout the reports are certainly not, you know, too much to do and not enough time to do it. Um, too much to do, not enough resources. So obviously we're sitting here with public safety tonight, that's a paramount importance to the town and the taxpayers, the residents. Um, so I guess, you know, there's so many things that need to be addressed here. Um, where do you think the area of focus should be right now? My opinion is, and uh, I know you all know it, we've done multiple studies. We have an MRI report. We have mm -hmm. six years of ambulance study. I did my, the, my CFO uh, report on it. I spent hours researching. And I understand we need updated information because I think you're going to be shocked how much the calls have increased. They certainly have not mm -hmm. decreased. Uh, I believe that's the priority to do a cost benefit analysis, to review uh, our current service. And I'm not saying that we should eliminate the, our current service. I'm just saying maybe we need to be more proactive about making sure we're getting the best bang for our buck. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's, I think that's an important thing that we need to do for our community. Um, so that would be my priority to, and if that's, again, you're going to hear more about that tonight, my goals and objectives. That was one of them last year, but there's just, 
there wasn't enough time to do it. Joyce has spoken with me, and we're going to be moving forward with it again this this coming fall, and it's it's a priority. So, I just I think that there's a lot of information that maybe folks don't realize and understand that we have two firefighters. So if I go on my professional development, we have one firefighter in town, and like I said, if we're lucky, we might have one or two folks in town on top of that. So we're still not meeting any NFPA standard during the day. So maybe it's not a 24-hour service, maybe it's an evaluation of when the majority of the calls are coming in, and I think you'll probably see that that is during the day and into the early evening. So all that information has been, we've been, we've been populate, you know, pulling this information in so we can evaluate it. So that's the priority, and I think that you'll see with federal support, if we're lucky enough to, to get a grant, you know, with a, a staffing grant, and then possibly an AFG grant for an ambulance. I think that you'll see that the communities around us are also going to appreciate what we're doing. So again, yes, regionalization. However, it's regionalization by supporting a big regional regional plan, which is the you know the medical control plan. So uh, that's the priority. Okay. And can I follow on? Um, I'll freely admit if there's one thing that keeps me up at night, it's worrying about that proverbial accident waiting to happen, which is quite real in, in your world. Um, and obviously never wanting to get to the place where it's something like that that is then the cause for action. So I completely get what you're saying about, you know, in order for us to make more informed decisions, we want data. You don't have the time, either one of you, really, to, you're, you're working managers, I mean, for sure. So, um, you know, is there anything that we can do to get other resources involved to help get all of that together to try to m make people more aware, at least, of um, where there may be some gaps or, you know, worse in services? Certainly, I, I mean, we have a we have a part-time office person who works 15 hours a week. Could that be part of her her purview? Yes, but there's not enough. 15 hours isn't enough to do what she has to do now. Right. If you're talking about outside services, mm -hmm. uh, we did have that um, the Thomas. grant that gave us some base information, mm -hmm. but there's a cost to that that we felt was mm -hmm. too too much, mm -hmm. from what I gather. So that information gathering. You know, when we spent hours with her putting together this information, uh, mm -hmm. it kind of just, that's all we got. And I don't even have it. You know, mm -hmm. it's there somewhere, but it's not in my possession. And we didn't go forward with it. So uh, I know they're asking about it again. So I don't know if there's grant funding available for that to, to make that continue on where we can have them helping us evaluate data. And uh, I don't know if there's a program at UMass that we could maybe yeah. look into. Back, or back to the, I was just going to say that, back to the communications with UMass and the town of Hadley, we had discussed this quite in depth with them. And uh, I believe, I asked you, Mike, to, if there was any way that we could get the calls from a student accident at, from Hampshire College, Amster, uh, Amherst College, UMass, so we can figure out like you said, what time of day all your calls are? Are they all accidents? Are they? Uh, yeah. Are they commuters? Are they students? Right. Does it, it that, really, it that really, kind of information should be brought forward. But that doesn't really make any difference. And it what, needs to be whether, taken into consideration. It doesn't make any difference where they come from or who they are. The, the problem is, is that they're in Hadley, and if we can't answer the calls in Hadley, which covers our radius, that's a problem for us. And, and my take on this is that we don't have a day call force. Um, we have people at nighttime that will come out because they're available, but the day call force is, is the utmost important for us to focus on for this next coming year. We can't do it with just two people. It's, it's a reality now of the size of our town and the people that travel through it. Um, so that's what you know. I feel that we really need to look for, and that's something that we've been talking about that that's important if the data analysis that's needed could lead to regionalization you could apply to PVPC for DLTA funding and 
the solicitation DLTA district Duh. local technical assistance oh, funding okay. it's yep. 2.8 million dollars that's distributed among the 13 regional planning agencies the cron a contract requirement is that PVPC solicit projects from every town and they'll probably do that late fall early winter as soon as we all get the contracts yeah. is that what Amherst did with their I think Amherst did it pre-DLTA funding. But For dispatchers, I think that's what they're looking into, or is that a, yeah, I don't a know state what grant? The or agency is, but there is a, a separate entity compiling all the data. You know, and, and like I said, uh, before I make a decision like that, I'm going to want all that information in front of me. Uh, you know, that, that's just the way it is. Joyce, that's fine if that's the way okay. you feel. Well, right. and I, I agree with Joyce about the staffing, but the, what I was getting at was really who we're servicing to because there's the Hadley residential community and then there's the corridor along Route 9 and then there's the influx of students from the university and I do think that it's worth having the information because it also helps inform stakeholders and stakeholders that informs potential funding exactly. so so that's where I was going with that just so but we still have to cover it absolutely doesn't matter our, our data that we're putting together for you, which again is in my goals and objectives, you'll be getting more detailed information monthly on the runs that we're going to. Yeah. So you will be able to clearly see what our busy months are and what those calls are. And I think you'll be able to equate a little bit better yeah. where we're getting impacted. Well, and I can tell you right get, now that we the, get most of the police department calls, weekly calls. That's not the ambulance runs. Right. That's not the ambulance so, runs. Karen, do you have any questions? Uh, not questions, but to both of you, uh, we're going to do a better job with the budget this year than they could have done last year. It was frustrating for everybody. We know it. We know it for everybody. So I, I promise you, we're going to work as hard as we can to make that uh -oh. bring a little less agita to you than, than you had last year. Uh oh, promises. We're going to try. We're going to try. And I know it was frustrating last year, and we're going to work hard. That both of you had for frustration with it. Uh, you hear that, Tri Board? Jerry's in charge. <laughs> Before we close out this meeting, can we talk about the Community Compact Program for three minutes? Yes. You, Jerry, Jerry? No, that's it. Okay. So, any other questions, comments? Ms. Watts? No? Yes. We are coming to the end, so. We're late. We're not late. We're just fashionably. Okay. okay. <laughs> We're going to skip something. Go ahead. So, Community Compact Program is a new. Um, Baker administration endeavor. It is to encourage partnerships between the Commonwealth and municipalities and to encourage towns to adopt best practices. Mm -hmm. And there are several areas of best practices that a town can work on. I'm going to try to do this from memory, but education, energy, economic development, financial management, information technology. Public safety. No. no, interestingly, no. no but regionalization is a topic, transportation and citizen safety, but it's mostly about safe routes to schools and complete streets yeah. mm -hmm. and helping senior citizens drive better. Mm. <laughs> um, so it's um, a town can pick up to three best practices. The application is super simple. It's basically like checking a box, and what the town receives is technical assistance to adopt the best practice and whatever work the town needs to get the best practice adopted. Right now, the administration is encouraging towns to apply and encouraging towns to apply for all three, and says is saying that towns will get the technical assistance needed for all three best practices while there is still resources to allocate. And so the resources are that it will be state agencies providing their staff to help towns or the regional planning agencies in the state charged to provide that technical assistance or there is a pot of about a little more than two and a half million dollars that towns would get a grant to work with someone like the Collins Center or something else. So I think it's an opportunity for us to start to address some of the things that we've been talking about here in the tri board to move us to a smoother budget process if we wanted to pick one of those best practices and 
it would be great if the town would move quickly. 90 communities have applied so far. We know that this, the free state technical assistance in many of the categories is already tapped out. So we need to move quick. And we should, we should do that. Didn't we already vote to do that? Did you pick them? There's no application yeah. in. I just yeah. checked today. Yeah. yeah, we haven't picked them. That was something that we talked about a while ago. Last meeting. Um, I, I was going to receive uh, further training with uh, STEM, but that's September 24th. It sounds like that. I think we should, we should move faster. Faster than that. All right. So we'll have something for the selectmen at the next meeting. I, I'll send you the letter we're sending to our town so that okay. you. Have it. Yes, please. Thank Thanks you. for the heads up on that. Well, the other, the other more important piece of that is the fact that you get bonus. You get bonus you points get bonus. For, for five discretionary state grants, and there's about, my calculation is about five to eight million dollars of implementation funding. So, for instance, if we picked IT as one of the best practices we wanted to improve upon, there's some possibility then there would be funding to implement an IT system. That's not been announced yet, but we know there are pots of funding that the administration is trying to figure out how to spend. There's also we'll pots. Yeah, we'll help that's, <laughs> that's what I say. Yes. There's also pots of funding that are deleted. Many. So there's a lot of stuff that's okay. being yeah. tracked and right. they're being it's just being passed out different ways. Thank you. All right, so next tri board meeting is actually October. Or we decided to do one in the middle of September to have another SWOT analysis. I actually lost my notes, so I apologize. I think we talked about another tri board. I didn't write mark it down. I thought we might have talked about doing a or having the tri having the one to show up at a select board meeting. Is that what we decided for the SWOT analysis? So uh, we have a special town meeting coming up. We have not a whole lot of time to get it worked out. It might be helpful not only to have a presentation on the SWOT analysis, but a tri-board coordination on the, on the warrant, uh, which has to be posted no later than October 9th. So, so, so do we want to make the, another, the middle? Sixteenth. We will make the actually. We will make the sixteenth. Seventy-five B. Sixteen twenty third. That's our normal meeting, right? Seven. 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 So I wouldn't put it any later than the sixteenth. So do we want to do sixteenth just for the warrant discussion, or do we want to have a little group of the uh, tri board get together and, and talk about the warrant? and try to work it through that way first. Or both. There's only a... Or both. Or both. I mean, it would be more efficient if we had a little pre-meeting to work, discuss things. So if we let... an hour goes quick. Do so you want to have the chairs from the tri-board get together and have a quick... Mm -hmm. Sure. So the well, chairs... Or the chairs doesn't... me uh, get together and... Have a pre-meeting before the six. Linda's house. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> those days are over. <laughs> <laughs> but that was so convenient. <laughs> um, it was. It's it's right was. Here. <laughs> um, so, do what? How do we want to do that? What will? What are you? I'm you okay would. with doing a. I, I, I'm okay if everybody else is okay with the chairs getting together yeah. before the 16th. Yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. And yeah. then the 16th. Get us the yeah. information so we can take a look at it. Yeah. And the 16th will be the we'll meet at how we, we split the baby and say 630 and, and just talk about the how it's it, never enough time you know yeah, right. it's it's just six <laughs> I was hoping you guys would say that instead of me so I'm not the bad guy yeah, it's never time so six o'clock on the 16th with our tri board to talk about the warrant okay, and no, no SWOT analysis, no SWAT analysis then. during tri board yep I think we have SWAT analysis. Except, Linda, don't, on the 16th, don't you have a big meeting at the Oliver Transit Center? Do I? Yes, you do. What is that on? Well, it's funny you should ask. Thanks. 
<laughs> Please join us for an information-packed evening regarding town's budgeting. Joe Markarian. Oh, it is oh, yeah. a good one, yeah. That's, what That's a good one. Joe Markarian's going to give a very nice presentation on to, on budgeting. We're going to be in the selectmen's meeting, but... Wow, Jerry, you're right. I should be at that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the, 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 the tribe board, so someone else from the school committee yep. can come. It's okay. Linda, are you going to start up the uh, fall programs again up there? Yeah. If you're I'll, on make, a I'll list, make sure we'll, you're on the invitation yeah, list. Because I got a lot of good information off there in the past year. All right, so, so we're all set with the uh, 16th at 6. Yep. And then the chairs or the, de and the, chair, or the chair's designees will get together for to go over everything a little bit. Just to plan. One final question. Um, we had talked about the select board doing their own kind of prioritization on the swap. So just hold this and when are we going to talk about that? Um, well, so what's the rest of the schedule for the SWAT? So we lay out the rest of the schedule? We haven't laid out a schedule, but I imagine DPW is next. Uh, get your big department so out of the, the way. Schools had a certain time I wanted to do theirs, didn't you? It was supposed to be Monday, but we had a posting problem, so we'll be doing it tomorrow night. You'll be assigned when you want to do your Okay. Oh, here? Yeah. For the big we should probably do it first before we schedule it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so probably those two next, and then. And then town hall departments together. Yeah. Right. So maybe the 16th, we'll do DP, surely do DPW on the 16th. And then maybe we can do town hall departments on the 16th. During our regular meeting, that's a question. A I, uh, yeah, I talked about the, uh, the the town hall uh, folks uh, getting in front of the selectmen at the department head meeting today. So I'll just tell them that's when we're going to do it. Well, what else do we have on the sixteenth? Uh, we had talked about a public forum on the budget, which had been deferred until the sixteenth because the ninth was unavailable. Uh, we have an executive session having to do with dispatch collective bargaining agreement, but other than that, I don't have anything. So let's do DPW and Town Hall 16th. Okay. Six o'clock, we'll do tri board, and then we we'll go. We are going to talk a little more. We can talk a little more about the, the warrant a little later tonight because we have it on the agenda for the select board if you want to stay. Otherwise, if I want to stay, I'm okay. No one's moving. Okay, so. Don't blame you. I'm going with you. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much.